Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jasmine, and welcome to my channel. Many of you guys have asked me to do videos on how to get over mental blocks or frustration in figure skating or you guys just can't land a jump or a spin and I was looking after it and I found this website that talks about how to deal with frustration and mental blocks in figure skating and I decided to read it for you guys. So hopefully this video helps you guys and we're going to see if this can help me too because sometimes I have some mental blocks and I get really frustrated with skating. But without further ado, let's get started with the video. Before we get started reading this article, I wanted to mention that this video might be a little bit long because there are a lot of things to cover in here, but I will be reading these frustrations for you guys and I'll have timestamps to each of them in the description below if you guys want to skip around and watch a certain part of the video. So here are the different things that this article will be covering. The first one is over practicing the same problem area. Then there's comparing yourself to others. Next, feeling that you aren't making the grade. There is wondering if you will ever get it or thinking that you will never get it. Over practicing, exhaustion, not enough practice, life issues outside of the rink getting in the way, being over critical with yourself, a favorite of adult skaters, feeling that you are in the wrong discipline, reaching a plateau in general that you cannot get past, the post-competition com slash test blues, not progressing fast enough, and receiving criticism from others. So now let's get started with the article. The title of the article that I found is called How to Deal with Frustration in Figure Skating. So I'm going to start off and read it. Here it says, so you have reached the point where you are either frustrated with what you're doing or trying to do, or you feel like you have reached a plateau and aren't going anywhere. Firstly, it's perfectly natural. This happens to all figure skaters, and for many, it happens many times in a lifetime. There could be many reasons why you're feeling this way. You could be over-focusing in need of new types of training or just being too tough on yourself. Read on to find out what is most likely for you. Take what you want, leave what you don't. This article is aimed at helping as many people as possible. One size doesn't fit all, so take the parts that you can connect with and leave the things that don't resonate with you. Basically, take what you want and leave what you don't. Here it says, ice skating is hard. Just before I get into the whole subject, I thought I would state the obvious. Ice skating is hard. If it was easy, everyone would do it. But if everyone could do it, no one would be amazed watching the Olympics and none of your friends would think you're cool for being able to do it all. The bottom line is, if ice skating was easy, everyone would be doing it. So don't be so hard on yourself. The first frustration is over practicing the same thing over and over again and over and over again. We have all been there, right? You're learning your spin, so you spin, 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 and spin again. Now don't misunderstand. If you're going to get good at something, you have got to do it hundreds and sometimes thousands of times. You can overcook it though. If you're falling out of your spin after two or three revolutions, the answer probably isn't to spin yourself into a dizzy mess trying. Sometimes, if you're doing something wrong, repeatedly, it's because you're making the same error over and over again. So doing it more and more times might not help. Okay, so you get to the point where you think, well, that didn't work, I'll do it a different way. That's great, because you do find new ways of doing things that way. But don't keep trying and trying, getting more and more frustrated. Take a break, do something different for a while. Go and do something completely different and come back to it later. You might find that you do better at it having had a break. Talk to your coach. Yes, if you're struggling with something and getting so frustrated, you're ready to bend the entire sport, back off. Tell your coach that you're struggling and try their advice. So for me, this is a really big problem because if it's something that I know I can do, if it's something that I've never done before, like if it's like a triple or something, and I'll still work on it, but if I don't get it, I won't be as frustrated. But if I know I can literally do it, like if it's a double axle and I can't land it, I literally will go around in circles like a hundred times, just keep on doing it until I finally land it. But sometimes it gets just worse and worse. 
And my mom, she's like through the glass, she's like telling me, you should probably like calm down, like take a break or move on to something else and then go back to it. And then I'm like, but mom, I can't go on to like something else until I actually land it or like I get it good. Because for me, I also have a problem. Like if I move on from something, if I can't get it, then if I go back to it after I work on something else, it's just even worse. So... I don't know which is actually better for me sometimes, but I'm really bad at this. <laughs> the next thing that frustrates figure skaters is why am I not as good as them? Comparing yourself to other figure skaters. We have all done it. I always have to tell myself not to compare myself to others. Yeah, it's tough when you have just mastered a mohawk at anything like what you would call speed. Then what happens? Someone powers around the rink, knocking out mohawks, counters, rockers, and more. It makes you feel pretty bad. It's not where you are, it's where you have come from. That's right. Someone who I greatly respect said that to me once, and it's true. The race is only with yourself. Try to stop focusing on where you want to be and think of where you came from. Once you couldn't, once you couldn't even skate, now look at you. Okay, so you're not an Olympic standard, but that's not the point. You're getting better all the time. Gratitude. Be grateful. Gratitude is a wonderful, humbling emotion. There will be people who can't skate, who will look at you and think, I wish I could do that. But you don't hear them. You hear the inner voice telling you, you should be as good as the person over there. You're already better than most people on the planet. That is based upon the fact that most people can't ice skate. Okay, I don't know what percentage of the Earth's population can skate, but it's not very high. You're one of the few. Enjoy it. Okay, so it's easier said than done. The bottom line is, think how far you have come. Be, be, be grateful for where you are. If you see someone that is great, learn from them. Maybe they practice loads. Maybe they do off-ice training. Maybe they have been skating longer. Either way, learn from them and realize that you're being the best you can be. Right now, you'll get better and better as time goes by. I don't usually struggle with this because I feel like... I'm doing my best and I'm always improving every single day and I'm happy with that. But I do have one of my friends, she's always comparing herself to other skaters and I try and tell her not to do that because she is also an amazing skater so she should probably try working on it but she is a really good skater and I'm really happy for how far she has come in skating. The next thing that frustrates figure skaters is feeling like you're not making the grade as a figure skater. Comparing yourself to others part two. The nightmare continues. Well, I guess this happens to all of us now and then. The issue here is how high have you set the bar? You might not think that you have set the bar at all. I'm no psychologist, but you can't help but notice other skaters around you, right? Maybe you think, oh, they have nice rocker or crikey. I don't know what that is, but <laughs> I can't do a three turn at that speed. All the time you are setting the bar. Comparing yourself to a Fittiest deal. As S Club 7 said, and it's not very often I quote S Club 7, bring it on back to you. Yeah, it's you. How better you are than you were last week, last month, last season. You're getting better all the time. Be proud. I don't have much to say to this, but I wanted to mention that not every figure skater is the same, so you guys should be happy and proud of your guys' selves for how far you guys have come because you are definitely going to improve in skating even though your session might not be the best but you might have an amazing session tomorrow so you are always going to be improving in skating so you don't have to keep comparing yourself to others. The next thing that frustrates figure skaters is feeling that you're letting your ice skating coach down. We all respect our coaches, right? So you don't want to let them down. But the truth is, what you think they think and what they actually do think is probably two totally different things. I know myself that sometimes it takes you absolutely ages to get something. You practice something over and over again and you still can't get it. Every week your coach goes through the teaching of the element and every week you struggle. It's easy to assume that the lack of completing the move is frustrating to your coach. Well, that may be true. Maybe it is frustrating, but that is not letting them down. If you were to give up, stop trying, ignore their advice, or start quoting to them what you have learned from YouTube, then they will feel let down. If you're disrespectful to other skaters and coaches, they may feel let down. 
But if you're trying your best and not getting it, you're not letting anyone down. Get up and try again. You're getting better. You just can't see it yet. If you don't achieve the level you wanted in a competition, notice it's what you wanted here doesn't mean you have let your coach down. If you're on the run-up to a competition, you trained hard, you listened, you went out there and gave it your best shot. Then you're letting no one down. Be proud. Sometimes my coaches tell me that I don't work hard enough or I need to push myself harder, but this doesn't mean that I'm making, like I'm letting them down because they're just looking out for me and they want me to be the best skater that I can be. So this doesn't mean that you're letting them down in any way. They are just pushing you guys to be the best you can be. The next thing that frustrates figure skaters is wondering if you will ever get it. This has got to be the number one frustration, right? Everyone at some point has landed on their bum and thought, ooh, I'll never get it. Well, maybe not. There are some things that are just beyond you, but probably not as much as you think. I am guilty of this. You see, other people doing stuff you have never tried. When you have a go, it looks nothing like it, and you wonder if you will ever get it. I think the bottom line here is it takes time. Most things you can get, but it takes ages. I mean, some things take a long, long time to get right. It's hard because you can't see your own progress. You just have to believe that you're getting better and keep trying. I don't know anything to say about this, so let's just move on to the next frustration. The next one is the microwave effect. Okay, bear with me. Here goes the analogy. So, when you look at a timer on a microwave, it doesn't appear to move right. In fact, if you're watching and waiting, it seems to take ages. However, if you stop watching it, go away and make a cup of tea, when you look back, the timer has moved. I guess the old saying of a wash pot never boils is right. So don't scrutinize your progress on a daily or even weekly basis. Just get into the training and forget about how your progress for a while. Then after a longer period, maybe a month, you can look back and think, yes, I have improved over that. The next one is try a monthly video analysis to help ease frustration. Here says a good tip here is to get a video analysis from your coach on a monthly basis. If you can look at your progress in a particular area over, let's say, a month, you will see your progress more clearly than reflecting on your own ability. It is a way of seeing what your coach sees. On another note, video analysis is a great way to see where you are going wrong and for a coach to be able to point out particular areas of improvement. Most importantly, you can see how well you're doing in an area by comparison. So this does help a lot because most of the time, either I or my coaches record me skating so I can look back at it either later that day or like after the session or later that week or later that month so that I can look back at it and see how I've improved. The next one is overtraining and figure skating. Exhaustion. More is more, right? No. Wrong. I have personally fallen into this trap. You get frustrated because of lack of progress and so you skate more and more. You do more off-ice training, you do more of everything. Then when you turn up to your training sessions, you're tired. Sometimes you feel tired, sometimes you can't tell, you just don't seem to skate as well. So you train more. Quantity of skating is nowhere near as important as quality. It's quality time on the ice you need, not just loads of time on the ice, okay? So you do need to skate at least twice a week, in my opinion, to make serious progress. But those times need to be quality. Even if you're skating just once a week, but you have quality time, it can be better than skating loads and getting nothing out of it. So my coach always tells me that it's quality over quantity, which technically means that how good you do something is more important than doing something more times, but still doing it bad. Because if you do it that way, that just makes it worse. But if you do it better, less times, it makes it better. If you guys understand what I'm trying to say. The next one is what is quality time when training and figure skating? Quality time is time when you have plenty of energy. It's time when you are well rested and hydrated. It's time when you are not loads of people on the ice to interrupt you. It's time when you can mentally focus on what you are doing with the minimum of distraction. Rather than spending two hours on the ice where you are moseying around, talk to your mates for half an hour, do five minutes, then go get coffee, get, qual get some quality ice time in. You can do more in an hour when you really put your mind to it compared with a two hour session when you're tired and not committed. Next one is don't be afraid to take a day off from your figure skating training. 
That's right. If you're really tired of feeling under the weather, take a day off. You will do better when you go back refreshed and feeling well. It is tempting to go regardless of how you feel, knowing that you need to progress. But listen to your body. Don't be afraid to take a break when you need to. The next one is how to deal with the frustration of not having enough time to practice your figure skating skills. It is frustrating, really frustrating, when every day life takes over and ice skating gets squeezed out to the periphery. When this happens, do the following. As above with the quality time advice, use what time you do have to your best advantage. Prepare for your session by being well rested and planning what you're going to train on in advance. This way, you know exactly what you have got to do when you arrive at the rink. If you have fewer practice times, make the most of them. Train with higher level of concentration and make them count. If you have restricted time at the rink, see if you can improve your skills with some off-ice training. Maybe to increase core strength, flexibility, and balance. Maybe try a home workout or yoga. Relax. Times will change. Life will change. You won't always be in the situation you are now. It's okay to not be training like an Olympic athlete all the time. Do the best you can. When you can't enjoy the time, you can't. If you can't skate or off-ice train, spend time with people that you love. It may, not it may not make you a better skater, but it will make you a better person. That, in the end, will make you a better skater. More than this, it'll make you happy. The next frustration is life issues outside of the rink getting in the way. It's hard to always maintain the same schedule. Life is just not like that. If you're an adult skater, maybe you have changed job and the new hours don't fit in with your old or your ideal training rig on. Maybe you have relationship issues, money issues. Maybe you have suffered a bereavement or are heartbroken for other reasons. If you are a younger skater, maybe you can't get a lift in or you have exams to revise for. Maybe you are struggling for the cash and your parents have to prioritize. All these things have happened. Life happens. This can cause a great deal of frustration. But worry not. Here's what to do. Firstly, if your training is restricted, do as mentioned above in the not having enough time to practice section. Maximize what time you do have and make the most of it. If you are really restricted on your skating because of other issues outside of the rink, aim to keep your ice legs. There have been many times myself when ice skating is hard or just not a priority at the moment. Whenever this happens, I just aim to keep my ice legs. By that, I mean if you can't progress, then just skate whenever you can to keep your ice legs. This means that you won't lose your balance on the ice or forget the feel of it. Keep your coach informed. When skating off ice affects your skating on ice, then tell your coach. If your coach knows, then you can work through the ice skating part of your problem together. Remember, they are there to help. Remember that life can change and things are rarely forever. Things will change once more in your favor. You will be able to commit to ice skating once more. Keep skating when you have and don't give up. Finally, ice skating is good for the soul. There will be some things in life that can be helped by having a little me time. Ice skating has been a way of liberating the soul. It can be more powerful than you may think in terms of getting you through tough times. The next frustration is being overcritical of yourself. Being overcritical on yourself is easy. It comes way too easy if you're an adult skater. Us adults do a really good job of mentally beating ourselves up about ice skating. We're very good at it, but we're not the only ones. Anyone can be overcritical on themselves. We have all said, oh, why can't I do it? Well, the answer to that is probably that you haven't practiced enough, had enough coaching, or are doing it wrong. It takes time. This ice skating lark. A lot of time. So go easy on yourself. Don't forget that it's not easy. If it were, everyone would be doing it. Don't set the bar too high. Try not to compare yourself with others and have a bit of fun. Don't forget that's why you do it, because it's fun. It's not the end of the world. Move on to something else for a bit. Come back to it later. Get more help and advice from a professional coach. Give yourself time. For younger skaters, you have time and youth on your side. Have patience. Listen to your coach and keep practicing. Don't judge yourself on other people's abilities. Concentrate on you. 
Be better than you were last year. Forget the others. Keep trying. Listen to your coach and know what you're getting better all the time, even if it doesn't feel like it. There is a no for parents here as well. It is tempting to interfere with the coaching process, especially as you want the best for your child. However, if you're hanging over the barrier and dis disrupting the coaching process, this can cause confusing and frustration for both parent and child. Comparing your child with other skaters will only help to undermine. With the exception of your child's safety being at risk, sometimes the less said the better. So I have had this happen to me before, but it was like the complete opposite. So most of you guys have known if you guys are on my channel for a while. You may know that I started skating when I was three years old. And when I was little, I loved skating so much. And I still love skating so much. It's like my favorite thing in the entire world. But when I was little, I literally pushed myself so hard and I wanted to be like the best skater there was. And my first ever coach that I started skating off with, she always told me that I was really young and when I tried to get better, she would push me down and she would be like, oh, you're just three years old, oh, you're just four years old, oh, you're just five, you have so much time to learn and stuff. And I feel like when someone wants to become better and learn, you shouldn't feel like pushing them down and like telling them that they're too young to learn something. I mean, if she wouldn't have done this, I would have been a better skater and overall, and I feel like this affected my whole figure skating career. I mean, it might have not been like Russia, you know, how the nine-year-olds have like triples and like quads already, but I feel like I would have been a lot better skater and I would definitely be better than where I am today. And then after I switched coaches from her to a different coach, they all told me that I like my basics were horrible and they weren't good and it took me so long to finally get them good enough to actually be able to like skate with them and they're still not perfect and I just feel like this affected my whole skating career so yeah. <laughs> the next is for adult skaters. It's even easier to be hard on yourself if you're an adult skater. Chill out. There is more against you. You're not as young as those around you, you're not as flexible, and you don't bounce so well when you fall. It takes longer to recover from training and injuries. You have a ton more responsibilities as an adult. You have to think about work and children and what, you would, and what would happen if you were injured. You don't get less scarred as you are older. Fears are more built in. But that's not all of it. You have skills that you can use that the youngsters may not possess. So, I don't know what to say to this because I am not an adult skater, but if you guys know what to say to this and you guys are an adult skater, comment them down below. This one is roll with your strong points. As an adult, you have a unique set of skills. Use them to your advantage. Take the cards you have and play them hard. You have listening skills much greater than the youngsters. Use them. Listen to every word your coach says. Record training sessions in a book. Make notes. Learn faster. You, as an adult, have great communication skills that took a lifetime to master. Throw those bad boys at the problem. Use communication to discuss problem areas, frustrations, and explore new pathways. Be scientific. All that schooling should be used for something, right? Get smart. Get science. Discuss the physics of moves. Understand counterbalance, alternative techniques, and different ways to create the desired effect through different schools of thought. Be more resilient mentally than kids. Use your patience and methodical approach to win through. This goes for everybody. You are getting better all the time. Sometimes you can't always see it, but you are getting better. Stick with it, people. Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> The next frustration is feeling that you're in the wrong discipline. So you are a figure skater skating free solo that is secretly thinking, I really want to dance. Maybe you really want to give free a go. Maybe try out for the synchro team. My advice is try it. Give it a go, whatever it is. Don't commit wholeheartedly to something you have never done, but get a taste. You have a word with that dance coach. Suggest a couple of lessons. Go with a friend if you don't know anyone that at that dance club one time. Be brave. Give it a go. If you're nervous, tell the coach that you're approaching that. Say something like, I would love to try, whatever the discipline, but I'm a bit nervous. What do you recommend? Don't commit in 
Don't commit to the new thing straight away. Dip your toe before you dive in. If you like it, consider committing to it a bit more. Don't go behind your coach's back. Your coach knows a lot of other coaches and will end up finding out if you're changing discipline or taking coaching from someone else without telling them. Have the respect and the decency to discuss it with your coach first. Everyone moves in different directions in ice skating at some point. Keep your coach informed because sometimes an act of change can seem like betrayal if you do it in a sneaky way. Bottom line, be honest and respectful and you will normally get the same back. Sometimes, training in another discipline can help you in your current discipline. For example, if you're a free skater doing jumps and more, doing some ice dance can only help with your edges and general skating ability. Equally, if you're an ice dancer, getting some free skating experience can be great help. This will help with the free dances that have spins and spirals. Some of the best ice dancers have been good standard of free, of free skaters in their day. The next frustration is reaching a plateau in figure skating and how to get through it. This phenomenon that I have really only felt in figure skating may be because skating is the thing that I have stuck to the longest. Maybe it's just a particular to figure skating. I don't know. I just know I have felt it and how I got through it. So here's how it felt for me. So you just basically feel, well, a bit bored, a bit going nowhere, a bit same old, same old. There won't be any big reason. No cataclysm, competition fails, no horrendous falls. You just feel kind of stuck, not going anywhere, not really progressing. The key here is going the distance. When you feel like giving up just for no apparent reason, saying to yourself, I've had enough of this now, hold on. It's just a feeling and it'll pass. If you keep skating, the passion and the excitement will return. You just have to ride out the rough times. Sooner or later, a new opportunity will present itself. Maybe a change in training. Maybe a test, show, or competition. Often, a new event will reignite your passion. Something different from your norm. Something that creates that spark again. That relights your fire. Cue the song by Take That, LOL. Keep it, keep at it, and something will come along. Often I think that I often I think that it is a frustration about your own skating ability. I'm no psychologist, but when you're really skating well, the feeling of pa too goes. Often it is frustration at our ability. As your ability approves, the feeling of plateau will often go. <coughs> the freaky thing is that will really bend your mind is that often the feeling just goes. It comes for a while and just goes. It just passes by like the wind. It's here and then it's gone. If it is really getting to you that you really felt a plateau and don't know why, speak to your coach. If you don't have a coach, then talk to other skaters. It will most likely pass. Stick with it. Go the distance and you will improve and fall in love with the sport again. The next frustration is growth spurts in children causing a frustration plateau in figure skating. It is worth mentioning here, on the subject of plateau, that a growth spurt in a child can sometimes be the cause. There has been many a good child skater that has suddenly plateaued due to a growth spurt. Sometimes a child can suddenly lose a perfectly good twizzle or spin due to growth spurt. This can be a source of frustration for both the child and the parent. This will go, however. If training and practice continues, it is a matter of sticking with it. So this is kind of with me because I am really tall in person, if you guys have ever met me in person, but I am a really tall person and I always have been, so I've never really had a growth spurt because when I was little, I already was tall and I was always the tallest person like in class or whatever. So this is really normal for me. It's a little bit harder because it's easier for shorter people to get elements than taller people but I'm used to it because I've been doing it my whole life but I do know a lot of people and some of my friends they were shorter and they suddenly just grew and they lost some of their jumps and spins and they had to work again and get those back and I know how it feels for them because I wouldn't want to do that again because it takes a lot of hard work to get something and then to suddenly just lose it I feel that's really sad so if any of you guys have struggled with it comment it down below because I want to know how you guys got through it.
The next frustration is how to deal with the post-competition or test blues. It's not uncommon to feel a lull, a kind of frustrated low, a few weeks after taking a test or taking part in a competition. I felt this myself once after taking two ice dance tests relatedly close together. As an adult skater, it was quite a triumph for me to pass two ice dance tests in the same year. That year, I had worked really hard towards the tests, focused a great deal. My coach had put a lot of effort into the tests, and I had made a great progress in the training. The, the test came, I was very nervous, but I passed them. I was elated. After the tests, I felt like my standard of skating had gone down, or at least plateaued. With nothing major to work on, I felt a bit stuck. Like, you're going back, just going through the motions of skating, but not hitting the high of really progressing. In this situation, I really recommended speaking to your coach. My coach informed me that on the run-up to a test or a competition, you operate at a high level. You're doing everything to the max, but you can't stay up there forever. There has to be a come down. While we skate, our training is in waves. There are periods where you operate at your peak. There are periods where you go back to basics and begin to struggle at, your, at new concepts. When you take a test or enter a competition, you have to get really good at one area. If it's a test, you are practicing what is needed for the test over and over. When you are training for a competition, you are practicing your program over and over. You get very good at one small area of figure skating, but when you are returned to normal training after the event, you begin to train once more in other areas. This is often where the problem lies. In all the other areas, you're not so good. Your memory of the areas that you have become very good at quickly go, and you are plunged into struggle once more. This is the post-competition or test blues. Well, that's what I have called them anyways. Don't worry. Give it a couple weeks, and you will begin to feel progress in the new areas you are training in. You will be able to see progress and get the feeling of gaining new skills. Speaking to your coach. They will almost certainly be used to this with their students. Plan together new goals and how your current training fits into the bigger plan. As soon as you start moving on to new things, you will be fine. Try not to forget all that you have achieved and seize the opportunity to take on new challenges and the struggles that they bring. You will have greater skill as a skater and have the real sense of passion for what you do. The next frustration is not progressing fast enough. Not progressing fast enough for who? For you most likely. This is another case of setting the bar too high and how we classify progression. I shall deal with this in two parts. Who are you not progressing fast enough for? I doubt it, it's your coach. They're more likely to be interested in well-learned skating techniques, mastering the basics, and that you make steady and safe progression. It's more likely to be yourself that is setting a benchmark that cannot be achieved. So don't set the bar so high. You are progressing. Maybe not at the speed you would like to, but you are progressing. It is important here to realize that there is a difference between not progressing very fast and plain old impatience. Be patient with yourself. Enjoy the journey. You will get there. How are you measuring your progress? Don't fall for the cheap trick syndrome. It is the easy to watch someone who only ever practices one thing and think, oh, I can't spin like that. That is because all they ever practice is spins. No edge work, no transitional moves, just spins. Don't fall fool of cheap trick syndrome. This is where you only focus on the bits that make people go wow. So the jumps, the spins, the spirals, the fancy bit of footwork, or your party piece. Just because you don't have a host of crowd pleasing moves don't mean, doesn't mean you aren't progressing. Work on your basic skating skills. It is your basic skating skills that will make you a great skater. Your control, your edge work, your transitions. These take longer to learn. So it is easy to feel that you are not progressing when you see someone banging out a fancy move in front of you. Stick with what you are working on. Get the basics down first. When you have got them, whatever you learn next is an addition because you will already be a good skater. Past all of that, if you still feel like you're not progressing fast enough and it's really getting to you, speak to your coach. Don't keep it all inside. They will most likely have ways of helping you. The next frustration is receiving criticism from others. Be careful whose advice you buy. Ask yourself what they have, ga have to gain by giving it. If the person who is giving you advice is a caring friend who is also a good skater, well, there's a chance that the thing 
they have to gain is the genuine wish to help a friend. So maybe they have a point. So maybe ask your coach about the area they have pointed out. If the person is not really known to you that well or is just an acquaintance, what do they have to gain in telling you that you're doing something wrong? Are they just trying to make themselves feel better by putting you down? There are lots of people in life like this. Skating is just one area where you meet them. Beware of, beware of advice or criticism they give. If your coach criticizes you, they have nothing to gain other than to help you and make you a better skater. They have already proven themselves as skaters, so that's fine, as long as you are spoken to a di dignified manner, with respect, which is how you should speak to your coach and any other human for that matter. That's what you are paying for. Someone to point out where you're where you are going wrong and to use their years of experience to tell you how it should be done in a safe and successful way. Getting Get used to being corrected by your coach. That's the whole point of having a coach. So when taking criticism, listen to your coach first. Maybe. Take on if you wish. What if your trusted loving friends tell you and ask your coach about areas raised? As for the doubters and haters, well, you keep training for you and don't sink to their level. You're doing fine. Just keep practicing. The final thing it says here is you're going to feel frustrated in figure skating. Skating is hard. Most frustrations will pass in time. They will pass. Seek advice in your coach. Don't be so harsh on yourself. Go the distance. Keep skating and have fun. It's a beautiful sport and you are amazing. This last sentence is 100% true. Figure skating is a beautiful sport and all of you guys are amazing. If you guys want to have this article, I'll have it linked down below in the description box so you guys can read it for yourselves. Anyways, this is the end of the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Also, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. I love you guys. Bye!